My mic is muted. Grace and peace. Grace and peace. Welcome to the powerhouse. Hey, lady. I love the theme song. Hey. We love you at the powerhouse. Hey. Hey. <laughs> so good to see everybody tonight. God bless you. We're ready for the word of God. We're ready for Bible class. I see Charles Steen. Hey, my cha-cha. Sister Angela Eccles is on here. Teresa Evans. Jacqueline is here. Val Wells. Phyllis Gladden. You all are so faithful. Wanda Brookings. That's the praiser. Brother Mario is on here. Diane Allen. Sherm. What's up, Sherm? I love you, Sherm. Good to see you. Sister Harvetta is here. Mother Ruthie Williams. Love you, mother. Praying for your husband. So glad he's doing well. Elder Daryl Meek, I mean, you all are on here. If you're ready for a word from the Lord, let us know. Let us know. Well, lady, we're talking about being home for the holidays. This is what Bible study looks like right now, along through here. <laughs> home for the holidays. We're home for the holidays. So we want you guys of course to be engaged tonight to interact with us while you're sitting on your couch sitting in your bedroom wherever you are sitting near your fireplace wherever you are in your home it's going to be a great night tonight and we know that the power of god is going to move in an awesome way make sure you like us make sure you share us we want y'all to talk don't be shy tonight's subject is help my family is dysfunctional. Help, my family is dysfunctional. We're going to deal with marriage on tonight. We're going to deal with marriage on tonight. If you're single, don't you turn us off because no. you're going to be helped. You're going to be blessed. One day you may want to get married or one day you may not. So I'm going to start out with the single folk and y'all going to have to help me out here, okay? <laughs> it's going to be so exciting tonight. Help, my family is dysfunctional. We're going to deal with marriage tonight. And get ready, get ready. All right, we're going to introduce to you the executive pastoral team of the Powerhouse Chicago. This is so exciting. We're going to do that. But we're going to start tonight with some praise and worship. Brother DeMario, you at the crib? Where you at, DeMario? Lift your hands, Brother DeMario's at the crib. All right, he's ready to worship and give God some praise. Lady, you want to sing first? No. <laughs> All right, DeMario, take us away. Praise the Lord, everybody. Do you know that our God deserves to be worshipped? He deserves to be praised. He deserves the adoration. So we're just going to lift up this simple worship song. Hallelujah. Wherever you are, can you help me lift it up this evening? Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. I know you know it, so help me sing it where you are. My hallelujah belongs to you. 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 And this is my favorite part of the song, it says, You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it, yeah. You deserve it. Sing my hallelujah. Come on, can you help me sing this song this evening? Sing my hallelujah, belongs my hallelujah, to you. Belongs. Yes, it is. Sing my hallelujah, hallelujah, belongs. Sing my hallelujah, belongs. Yes, it is. Lift it up and just say, You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it, Jesus. You deserve it. Now we can sing this part together. So all of the glory, all of the glory. Yes, it does. Say all of the glory belongs to you. 
Yes, Lord, we cry out all of the glory, Lord. Yeah. Yes, all of the glory, Lord. Yes, it does. It belongs to you. Now let's make this declaration. Say, you deserve it. Oh, yes, Lord, you deserve it. Yes, Lord, you deserve it. So can we lift up the highest place? Lift your voice and say, say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. We cry hallelujah. Say hallelujah. We cry all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. You deserve it. Yes, Lord, you deserve my worship. Yes, Lord, you deserve my praise. You deserve to be magnified. And you deserve to be glorified. So I'm going to lift my hands and give it to you, Jesus. Because there's nobody like you, nobody like you. Yes, God, you deserve it. Can we lift the highest praise one more time? Lift your voice and say, Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. We cry hallelujah. Say hallelujah. To the most high God, we say hallelujah. To the risen Savior, we say hallelujah. He the King of Kings, say hallelujah. He's the Lord of Lords, say hallelujah. He's the great I am, say hallelujah. And he's the Lord of Sharon. Say hallelujah, and there's nobody like him. So we give him the praise. I said, There's nobody like him. So we give him the praise. We say all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. You deserve it. Yes, God. Oh, yes, you deserve it. Yes, Lord, you deserve everything we have. Oh, yes, God, you deserve it. Yes, God, you deserve it. Yes, God, you deserve it. Oh, and we love you, God. We love you, Jesus. We love you. Yes, we love you, Jesus. Oh, you deserve it, Jesus. Oh, we say my hallelujah belongs to you. Mm -hmm. My hallelujah belongs to you. Hallelujah. Come on, give God some praise wherever you are. If, he, if you know that he deserves all of the worship. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Yes, he hallelujah. does. Thank you, Demario. We love you, man. We appreciate you. You are so anointed and powerful, and you blessed us on tonight. Well, lady, are you ready to introduce our teachers tonight, not only are they our teachers, this is the staff at the Powerhouse, and I want you to get to meet our staff, and I want you to celebrate them. Tonight, we're going to introduce you to the executive pastoral team. So if y'all can just put that up there tonight, the executive pastoral team of the Powerhouse Chicago. Y'all better make some noise. Are y'all excited? The Lord has Woo! sent us some help. The Lord has sent us help. Qualified, equipped, anointed, help in the Holy Ghost. All right, all right. We're going to introduce them to you one by one. After myself and Pastor, these three are in charge of the Powerhouse Chicago. Amen. You can trust them. You can love them. They are good people. So our first one is Pastor Paula Dickens. We want to welcome Executive Pastor Paula Dickens. She is a prophet of God. She's an administrator. She handles everything that pertains to the powerhouse Chicago. I mean, anything in the house. She especially is over the prophetic, the prophetic ministries here in the house. But she is over the business portion of our house, our HR department, um, administration um, here in the powerhouse, the food pantry, whatever we do in the building. Pastor Paula Dickens handles it and she's connected to it. So Pastor Paula, welcome, welcome. 
I Thank know, you. I know you don't like to brag on yourself, but tell yeah. us a little bit about you. You have been in the ministry. You have been putting up with Bishop a long time. Amen. She is married. She's a wife. She's a mother. Um, we've been knowing Paula, Lady Paula, long about twenty five years. I I knew Paula before we got married. We our families have always been connected um, through Bishop Claude Timmons. Yes, we love very much. So yeah, we we all have been connected to the Dickens family for a long time. And one thing I can say about Pastor Paula and her husband is that they've always stayed consistent. They're just beautiful people that love the Lord and they are truly faithful servants of God. And so I'm just excited that she is a part of our top tier team because she is overly qualified and she, we definitely um, are so blessed to have her. Oh, thank you so much. Welcome, yes, yes. <laughs> I'm only 36, so you know, you all knew me when I was a baby. <laughs> That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Come on now, Robin. Oh, um, I've been doing? Um, I've been married uh, 22 years. It'll be 23 years in May. Um, as stated, I've been with the powerhouse. I've been connected to the powerhouse since the early 90s, probably even before then. Um, so I've been connected to Archbishop. Um, for a long time. And then our lovely pastor lady, Andrea Hudson, when they married, um, as she stated, um, we fellowship together um, way back when. I think Clara Strong used to come to the churches. So that's been a long time, <laughs> way back when. So, but um, I am excited about what God is doing in the powerhouse. I'm excited to be connected to some awesome visionaries. Um, and I believe that God is going to take us further as we shift the future. Um, I'm excited about what God has done this year. And I know a lot of people say this year has been a um, trying year, but this has been a great year. This has been an amazing year. And I know that even with whatever's coming in 2021, that God is with us and that whenever God is with us, we, we can't help but to excel. So I'm excited about what God's going to do tonight. And thank you all for that um, introduction. Oh, we love you and we appreciate you. I was at your wedding, Pastor Marcus. Come on now. They didn't let me be in the wedding, but I was there. I was in the I'm on it. Sit in the crowd. See y'all. So this is Pastor Paula Dickens. Can y'all say some great things about Pastor Paula in the comments? If she's encouraged you, if she's prophesied to you, if she's blessed you, let the whole world know. She does a lot of things behind the scenes, ministering to the people. So I want y'all to say some encouraging words. Let's build up the woman of God and bless her on tonight, Pastor Paula Dickens. All right. Our next executive pastor that we want to introduce is Executive Pastor Dan Johnson. Welcome, Pastor Dan. We're going to put his picture up there. Put his picture up there first. Let's see him. Let's see him. Come on, Pastor Dan. Show out. Show off with your makeup. On. Come on. <laughs> Work it now. Work this picture. Pastor Dan Johnson, I've been knowing him as well for way over 20 years. I met Pastor Dan when he was a senior in high school. He used to ditch school and come to my noonday Bible class. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? I've been knowing him a long time. We went to the same high school, Lynn Bloom. Um, he taught me marketing. He is a businessman. He's a businessman. He's a family man. He's a husband. He's a father. He's very anointed. He's a kingdom guy. All right, let's bring in Pastor Dan. Pastor Dan handles ministry and the marketplace. So here at the Bar of Chicago, Pastor Dan is over our apostolic tier and our evangelistic tier. He handles everything outside of the powerhouse. So he connects us with the community, with the government, with the civic responsibilities. He connects us with the schools in the community. Whatever is going on in the city, in the world, uh, social justice, anything outside of the powerhouse, Pastor Dan Johnson, he does, everybody loves him, everybody knows him. He works for about 79 churches, but we number one on the list, okay? <laughs> so don't y'all get jealous. It's enough for him to go around. Everybody love Pastor Dan. He can drop a down. He has an apostolic anointing. I'm telling you, Pastor Dan, I know you when you was in the hood, huh? He from Inglewood, Saints. Woodwood. Tent revival. 
and he would call me and say, I hear you preaching. I can't sleep. You're too loud. I got to get up and go to work, and y'all making all that noise. Yeah. I think I told too much. I love you, Pastor Dan. We're so excited to have your gift. Welcome to the Powerhouse. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I don't know I, what to say. You didn't set it all. You know, I'm just a servant. I'm empowered to serve. And um, you said over 20 years, it actually has been, I'm 44 now. And so Bishop at night in high school, man, we've been doing this for almost 26, 27. It will be 27 years, December 17th, that I've been preaching. Wow. And, um, and so it's, it's so 27 years in ministry. Um, literally, I've been in business for about 25 years. Um, you were my client at the age of 20. By the time I turned 20, I was overseeing marketing and consulting with you in that regard. And um, man, we, and we've been in mentorship. God has just really blessed me. I'm a blessed man um, I, my, to my beloved wife, my Jesus chick. Yeah. Um, who uh, you say I stole from you. But yes, you did. I she did. was a member of this church. He met at this powerhouse. She was faithful. Yeah. I, I, I just went on. You you kept her in. You you was pouring into her, getting her ready for this uh, mandate that she was about to marry. And so, <laughs> oh, my Jesus. Man, he will not let that go. He will stick to that, that you stole yeah, he was a good he member. He will yeah. stick to that. He will a not good that member. Job. We love her. He yeah. just bless you. Listen, I am the proud dad of five wonderful children. I call them my fab five. And to be honest, the greatest gift that God has given me is not what I do in ministry outside my house, but it's the ministry inside my house. And it's the gift of fatherhood. And I believe it's in that gift that God graces every other gift that I operate in. And so um, that's just really who I am, man. And I'm grateful to be um, to be here, to be um, utilizing my talents and skills and whatever else God will um, pull out of me to help establish this particular kingdom. Um, and um, I look forward to it. It's, it's wonderful. Oh, we're so glad to have you back for Dan. We're excited about you. And to our third executive pastor, are y'all ready? He is here full time. He is ready. Bishop. Me. Oh my God, y'all make some noise for my bishop. I have a bishop on staff with me. Can you believe it? We have a bishop on staff. I just can't believe it. I'm so happy. I'm so elated. This man of God has been preaching for way over 25 years. He'll tell us the exact number. He's married. He's a husband. He's a father. He is a pastor, a bishop, a leader of leaders, a teacher of teachers. Um, he's very anointed. He is filled with wisdom. As you hear him tonight, y'all can bring him up now. Bring up my bishop. As you hear him tonight, you're going to be blessed. You're going to be encouraged. I am so glad that we have a seasoned man of God on our team. I know y'all love the young people. I love them too. But ain't nothing like the seasoning. Glory. This man as a fathering anointing, anointing. I respect him. I honor him. I look up to him. His wife is amazing. They are here in Chicago from New Orleans. God bless all of the saints. He's from Full Gospel Baptist Church, highly recommended by Bishop Paul Martin and Bishop, what's the bishop? My friend, Walker, Bishop Joseph Walker. They know he's with us. They're excited. Um, they celebrated him. I mean, y'all, this is something. This is like, this is amazing. We have a retired bishop who has experience in education and administration and teaching, and he's here on staff at the Powerhouse. He said, Bishop, I want you to use me up, use all my gifts. I'm coming to work every day. I ain't playing. I'm ready. He said, when I die, I'm going to die empty. Y'all hear me? You can't beat this. This is the father of Brother Tommy Triplett and Marcus Brown. Y'all know them. Send some shouts out to them. All right, Bishop, I love you. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Bishop. Well, Bishop, first of all, you said it. I'm so glad to be here. I'm thanking God for all God has done. It's amazing what God will do. Uh, so much in my life has been ordered by the Lord uh, to give years. I date myself. I've been preaching for 46 years preaching for 46 years, and I was teaching before that. 
uh, God started me in teaching ministry at 17 years old. I was in teaching ministry. And then um, as a teacher uh, in the church, I was in seminary Bible colleges before I ever started to preach. So I was doing that. I love the word of God. That's something God planted in my spirit. I love the God, but never ever saw uh, what was coming and, and what was gonna happen in my life. Um, my wife and I, thank God for her. She's been right with me. We, we will celebrate 41 years of marriage next month. On the 19th of January, we will celebrate 41 years of marriage. And we just thank God for all that God has done in that area. Uh, I, I'm just amazed at what has happened. Uh, two years ago on Mother's Day, uh, I was here uh, with my son, Tommy, and we were in town. And God spoke to me then and said, you are going to be in Chicago. And I, I couldn't believe it. God spoke it so plainly. And I went and got the family together and told them uh, what God has said. And, and my uh, daughter, Nikki, said, no, Daddy, you can't, won't be in Chicago. It's just too cold. And you got arthritis. You won't be in Chicago. But God told me that. He told me I was going to be here. I was pastoring my church, wasn't thinking about anything else. And then I thought about that winter. I have to tell this, that winter was very, very, very cold here in Chicago. And I said, maybe I didn't hear God right. Maybe Nikki was right. So I had a cousin that passed away that following year. And I came to the funeral and I said, oh boy, I gotta tell Tommy that I'm not gonna make it. And when I got here, went to the funeral, leaving the funeral to go see Tommy and God spoke to me again and said, I told you that Chicago is going to be where you are. I had planned to retire on next year. God told me this year uh, that this was my retirement year. It was time for me to retire. Things just came together. I remember, I guess it was about four years ago that I visited the powerhouse uh, with Tommy and I saw you minister. Uh, I, I watched you, there was such an anointing on your life and it hit me so hard. I told Tommy, uh, after service, I said, you know what? I could sit under him, not, not even thinking, just, just a thought that came in. I say, it reminds me so much of Bishop Morton. He's so serious and anointed. Never did I ever know that God was going to do what God did and that I would actually be here uh, at the powerhouse on staff and just means so very, very much to me. Uh, I, I knew I would retire from ministry but I did not want to, from pastoral ministry, but I didn't want to retire from ministry. And as you said, I want to just leave empty. Uh, God still has things for me to do and I praise God for it. And I am just happy, thrilled to be a part of the powerhouse and this great ministry. Love you, Pastor Andrea, you're just wonderful. You spoke into my life at a time I needed it. I haven't forgot that, you spoke into my life prophesied in my life at a time I needed that. And that just kind of broke some chains and helped me to understand what God was doing in my life. So I'm praised in God continually for having me here. Oh my God, Bishop, this is so amazing. Yeah, don't make me cry. Listen to me. I know. It's his son. I forgot about his, sister, his other son, Bishop Derek Triplett, who is a preaching machine. Yes, oh, yes. yes. I'm telling you, the pastors here in Chicago, everybody's jealous. Everybody knows he preaches to all these churches. They love him. They've been calling me. Bishop Trotter said, I'm going to borrow him. I mean, everybody, they are excited about Bishop Tommy Triplett Sr. We just thank God for you. So come on, we can put everybody up. I'm going to add a bishop. I, I cut you short. 41 years of marriage. Jesus. Lady, how long we been married? Let me see if you remember. Let me see if you remember. Huh? How, Come on, lady, quit how, long, how long have we been married, Archbishop? You gotta be 16, right? <laughs> yes. So, so let's do this. Bishop Triplett got 41 years. Somebody add this up. We got 16. Pastor Dan, how many you got? 10. 10. And Pastor Paul, how many you got? 22. All right, y'all add that up. Hurry up. When y'all get it, put it up. 16 plus 41 plus 10. Plus 22, 89, 89. All right? 89, Bishop. We got 89 years of marriage on this line tonight. You get ready to get blessed. Where can you go and get counsel and information 
from 89 years of experience, 89 years of marriage. This is amazing tonight. Okay, we got to hurry up and get started because we, we are over time already. So thank you all for being on. I see Pastor Leon Scoggins, who just got married. My new son, love you, man. I see Leisha Daniels, Juanita, Angela Chester. I'm Azul. Hey, I'm Azul. You're on here. I see you. Um, Hamika Brown Dua. Bless you, baby. Linda Hopper, Apostle Linda, and Curtis Simmons. Our parents, we love you. Thank y'all. All right, here we go. Let me just ask in the comments real quick. How many of y'all single people want to be married? And if so, tell me why. Bishop, I want to be married. How many of y'all say, I want to get married? Tell me why. Then, then single people that say, I don't want to get married. Tell me why. Real quick, real quick. I need y'all to type that in. Because a lot of people, they make marriage look bad. They make it look boring. They make it look like your life goes down when you get married. No fun, no excitement. I mean, okay, Ivy Douglas said I want to get married. We got a single lady on the loop. Anybody looking for a good woman who's a preacher? Ivy Douglas is available. She says, I do. Hasha Jones, she wants to be married. Where y'all at? Bishop, Ivy, did you say it too, Dan? Crystal Wood said, I'm trying to get married. <laughs> I was supposed to marry her last week, but because of the pandemic, we couldn't do it. Stephanie Waters, Leisha, y'all is ready. We got a lot of hot women on the line tonight. They ready. They ready. To, where the brothers at? I don't see no men on here. Nico Banks, Cynthia Smith, y'all ain't playing. Uh, Tara Bell says, I'm happily divorced. I will only remarry if God speaks loudly. <laughs> That's real right, Tara. That's okay. real. I want to hear from people that said, I don't want to get married. Gilda Ray, Mother Gilda, said, I need a man. Come on here. <laughs> Charla wants to be married. Okay. Lisa says she ain't not. Quit my hand, Lisa. Okay, keep going. Lynette Finney then said, I want to get married. <laughs> Victoria Brownlee, is there anybody that says, I Shirley Ellis, wait a minute. Stop the show. Stop the show, thing. Deacon and Shirley Ellis said, I would like to be married. Wow. Up in here. <laughs> oh my God, this is so good. All right. Shaniqua is being honest. She says, I got some fears about marriage. Okay. That's what I want to hear about. Somebody said, I don't want a second marriage satisfied in my singleness. I don't want to get married. Loretta Casey. Okay. Why y'all don't want to get married? Sometimes I think we show a bad picture and people have a bad perception of what marriage is, okay? So let me, let me open up with a question. What do you think people get wrong about marriage? Um, anybody, what do you think people get wrong about marriage? I'll jump in first. Um, I think the misperception about marriage is that there is one particular model of marriage. And so everybody is trying to achieve this what they believe marriage should be and marriage is not like a universal remote it don't it's just not one one model or one one way um marriage is individual based and there are several models several patterns and you got to find what mix works for you so i think that's one perception that people get that marriage is cookie cutter and it's I, not i'll say this as as to that I think people get married based on where they are instead of where they're going. And the challenge with getting married based on where you are instead of where you're going is this right here. All relationships are going to grow. Either they're going to grow together or they're going to grow apart. And if you get married for now instead of your next, you'll outgrow one another. So I think it's imperative that you look at your future and see what your future looks like and then work backwards to see if this person that you're connected with would actually fit with where you're going. So I think that is, that's one key. That's just one reason that we, um, we kind of miss it. Oh, that's really good. That's really good. And I forgot you got a book out, Pastor Dan. What's the name of your book? Um, 101 Questions to Ask Before You Say I Do. Oh, my God. The compatibility 
of um, the two before becoming one. Okay, Pastor Andre, I know you got a new book coming out too. What's the name of your book, Beth? We just released our ebook on last week entitled The Answers She Should Know Before She Says I Do. 150 questions a woman should ask a man. Y'all got a lot of questions going on here. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> so this is good. So Bishop Triplett, what do you think? What do you Dan says people are marrying because of where they are, not where they're going. As the Bible says, people are marrying because they, they're expecting a certain model and every marriage is not the same. It's about expectations. Bishop, what do you think? I think that 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 people make a mistake in believing that part-time dating is going to be like full-time marriage. It's a total difference between part-time dating and full-time marriage. And I think what they look for in marriage is what they are getting in this part-time dating and it's different. It's work. And I think they miss that sometimes in marriage. They think this is it. I'm with this person. We're dating. We go to the movies. We go to dinner and we do this. And while that does go on in marriage, there's a major, major difference in part-time dating and full-time marriage. Part-time dating can be on Fantasy Island, but uh, full-time marriage is something altogether different. Jesus, Jesus. Y'all are talking. Y'all talking some good stuff. Okay, lady, come on. You ask the next question. So I just want to know, like, what are the ingredients? Because we all know that marriage is work. And I think sometimes when people enter into marriage, they don't they don't prepare for the work that goes into a long lasting relationship. So what are those ingredients? What are those tools? that you need to have a healthy marriage? I think one of the things you must have is communication. And that communication, in order to have a healthy marriage, you're gonna to have to have a healthy dating cycle. You're gonna to have to give the courtship time because one of the things is we get married too soon. And, you know, we, and we don't understand that love is a feeling and feelings change. It's an emotion and emotions have its cycles. And so there's sometimes you don't feel like being married. Sometimes you have to be able to be married to the commitment when you don't feel like being married to the person. And so if you're going to, um, one of the key ingredients is be committed. You have to commit to this thing because every, I mean, we don't want to be bothered all the time. And so those times when we don't want to be bothered, we have to be committed. The other thing I think, um, I love the thing you said. Seventeen good things. Come on, <laughs> keep it going. Keep it going. <laughs> you good? You hot? Come on. So, so I mean, the, the reality is, and I have ten years in my current marriage. This is my second do, my second round, and um, I failed in my first marriage, and I failed because um, I didn't know myself. And I think a lot of times we try to get married for the other person to fix what's broken in us. And until we become whole within ourselves, it's kind of difficult to become one and whole with somebody else. So that's the other piece. We're looking to be fixed by the partner that we're marrying and they don't have the capacity to fix us. And so that's something else that we have to um, deal with. And I'll just stop right there. Debasta Dan, I'm gonna put an offering at your feet. Do you hear me? Because it is happening a lot. You're incomplete and your spouse is incomplete. And you think if we come together, we're going to complete each other. You have to be whole within yourself. You cannot come into a marriage insecure and you're jealous and there's competition and there's no growth. See, somebody asked, what is the work in marriage? You know what I think the work is? It's uncovering who you are. Marriage shows you stuff about you you didn't know about you. You didn't know you were impatient. You didn't know you were irritable. You didn't know you were mean. You didn't know you wasn't romantic. You thought you had it all together. Then when you get married, your spouse shows you stuff about you that you didn't know. So now you got a choice. Am I going to change me? Am I going to adapt? Am I going to grow? There's some stuff you got to change about you for your spouse. Sometimes you got to get rid of some friends when you get married. You can't get married and live a single life. 
if that person was a good friend for you when you were single, but they may not be a good friend for you when you're married. You got to be willing to let them go. Aria Alexander said, people expect it to be what they see on movies or celebrity relation goals. The moment is not what they expect it to be. They no longer want it. People are very wishy-washy with marriage now. They not understanding that marriage should be everlasting until death do you part. Somebody else said, everybody keeps saying marriage is work. What is the worst? Bishop Triplett, can you help me? What is the worst that we have to put into marriage? Well, part of that is, is the work of becoming. We, we, we talk about becoming one. A major part of that is the work of becoming one. And that's one. We're becoming one, but we don't stop being individuals. Uh, it's, it's, it's a thing that, that we're becoming one in marriage. That's what God really wants us to do, to become one. But we misunderstand that sometimes because becoming one does not stop us from being individuals. It's, it's, it's we have problems when it's not for becoming one. It's that my spouse becoming what I want them to be without me thinking about what I need to be uh, in this particular relationship. It's a process. It's work. It takes patience. It takes commitment. Uh, the, the foundational thing is love, but it's a great deal more than that in getting this marriage to where it needs to be. Time is involved. Time is often the enemy of good relationships because people are not willing, impatient people are not willing to put in the time and make the sacrifices necessary to make the marriage work. That's one question that I ask in uh, premarital counseling, and that's very, very important too, because many people get married without that. And premarital counseling is very, very important. But I always ask them, what do you like the most about this person? What makes you happy about them? And they'll get to talking and all oh, they'll get to smiling and looking at each other and touching each other. But then I ask the question, what is that thing that you dislike about that person the most? What is that thing that you dislike about them the most? Initially, they don't want to say what it is. But it's always something. None of us are perfect. That's something that we dislike. And then once they talk about it, I ask this question. If that never changes, and it could get worse, whatever that is, if that never changes, is there still enough left that you believe, <clears throat> excuse me, that you believe that you could spend the rest of your life with that person if it never changes? That's a major question that a lot of people uh, don't want to answer, never thought about. But marriage is work. Becoming is work. And becoming is an ind two individuals that come together with like goals, like things in life, wanting to be the best that they can be for each other. That's very, very, very important. You all are spitting out some powerful nuggets. Y'all don't have to wait for me to call y'all. I want y'all just to come in and take it. I'm Bishop, Pastor Paul. Where Pastor Paul go? Bishop, um, can I interject real quick? Uh -huh. um, I mean, what Bishop Triplett said was absolutely amazing. And definitely, definitely the truth. And I think sometimes when we talk about change, because marriage requires you to change. As Bishop Triplett said, you're still your individual self, but it is changing to be a better you. And marriage will challenge you to change. And change can be hurtful. Change don't always feel good. And so when you mentioned about you didn't know that you were selfish, a person didn't know that they were sarcastic, they didn't know that they were this, they didn't know that they were that. And now you have someone that is showing you who you really are. And you are now forced to either change or don't change. And change is not always glamorous. It can hurt, it can be upsetting, but then you have to you have to make the you know the, the decision do do I really love my spouse enough to become for me to become a better me for the relationship. Do I love my spouse enough to become a better me for our relationship? This is so good, Beth. It's not about you when you get married. It's all about your spouse. So y'all are helping me. Y'all saying that the work in the marriage is time. Bishop Chipper said it's sacrifice. It's change. 
And I'm going to give this to Pastor Paula because I'm Lamar Davis has an awesome question on here. He says, why does relationships change after we say I do? Let me start. I'm going to give it to Pastor Paula. That's a great question. Yeah. I have a lot of men who ask that. You know, why does relationships change after I say I do? When we were dating, I mean, we was having more sex than we were dating. Now we marry, you don't want to give up none of that booty. You don't want to kiss. You don't want to cook. You don't want to do nothing. You made all these promises. You were sexy on our dates when we were dating. Now you don't even dress up and get sexy. I'm telling you what men say to me that I have to minister to. Women say it as well. And I think what we don't understand is when you're dating, you're not dating the real person. You're dating their representative. I think I heard Bishop Jake, somebody said that. You're dating their representative. You're dating who they want you to see. You're dating who they are presenting to, so you can be attracted to them, so they can be attracted to you. And then once you commit, you're going to get the reality of who they really are. And it comes off piece by piece by piece. It's the same person. It's not that they were fake. It's not that they were phony, but they showed you all the good stuff. They didn't show you that they, they fart stink. Huh? <laughs> they didn't show you. You thought they fart smelled like a rose. <laughs> and you found uh -huh. out that they fart stink. Lift your hands and say, yes, Lord. Come on, thanks. So now you find out they're insecure. They got some weaknesses. They're not good with money. They, they don't have integrity. So it's not that they have changed so much. It's now you're getting to know the real person. You were outside of the house, and now the house looks beautiful. It's painted. It's like buying a house. Now you open the door. You in the house. It needs some plumbing. It needs some electrical work. It's still a good house, but it needs some repair. Come on, Prophet is called help me. And that is so true. And most of the time, when you're when you're dating, you're interviewing. You're interviewing for that position. And so when you go on a natural interview for a, a job, you're putting your best foot forward. Your hair is the best, your makeup is the best, your clothes are the best. You're interviewing for that position. So you're only going to allow them to see the good things. And to be honest, when you're dating, you see all this stuff, but you think that you can change it. You think that it's going to change. And this is what I like to say when I'm counsel, um, when I'm giving uh, marital advice is before you get married, what if the things about this person that you're dating does not change? The things that you don't like about them, the things that you all argue about, the things that you all you all get into it about. What if it doesn't change? Can you deal with this person if these things never change? Not what you your expectations, not what your their potential is. Can you deal with this person if they never change? And I think a lot of times people go into marriage looking at potential, looking at, you know, oh, I can change them or we can fix that. But what if you can't? What if it can't be fixed? What if it doesn't change? Can you deal with this person? Can you live with this person just the way that they are? And a lot of times I think, you know, people are like Bishop Triple said in this fantasy world and they think that they can make changes or they can do something like they're God and only God can change a person. But then you got to wait for God to change them. Can you do that? What if it takes 20 years to change them? Can you wait for God to change them? So um, I, I think that when you when you first dating, you don't you don't get the real person. You get that that interview person that's trying to get that job, that's trying to boo you up. <laughs> so, yeah. And you know what? We 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 live in a society that tells us that opposite attracts. But one of the things I've learned is that opposites only attract until you realize you're opposite. Once you realize you're opposite, the attraction leaves the window. It goes out the building. If the truth of the matter is, if she like horror, if you like horror and action, and she like comedy, 
while you're dating, you both make the sacrifice to go see movies you don't like. And yes, me and lady. Yeah, yeah. But once you get comfortable, all of a sudden you at the movies by yourself because now that's the layers and all of those things that have worn off. When you guys was talking about the work, there was five C's that came to me that I jotted down. Number one, part of the work is to connect. You have to stay connected. And I think a lot of times issues allows us to disconnect. And so, and we disconnect first with our head. Then we disconnect with our heart. And then we disconnect with our body. And before you know it, we're disconnected. The second thing is care. If you're going to put in the work, you have to care. And that means you have to be sensitive to not being right, but sensitive to being righteous. And there's a big difference because I don't want to be right. I want to be righteous. And in being righteous, I got to love you as Christ loved the church. And, and, and so there, so you have to care. A, a lot of times we have monologues instead of dialogues. That's the sec, That's the, three, the third C, which is communication. Monologues causes argument. Dialogues causes agreements. We haven't learned how to listen to one another. So instead of us actually listening, we're waiting our turn to, to talk. And so, so a lot of times we engage in non-communication because we're speaking for an hour and neither one of us are talking about the same thing because we haven't listened. The other, the next piece is um, we got to commit. And I said it earlier, you got to commit to this thing. It's not going to be great every day, but you got to commit. When I, when I do premarital counseling, I say you got to practice on how to outlove each other. Make it a competition that you're not going to outlove me. I'm committed to loving you. And then you said it, Pastor Andrea, you got to be willing to change. Understanding. I don't want to listen. If my wife is the exact same person that I married 10 years ago, something's wrong because life happens. The conduit of growth is change. So we have to change and we have to change and evolve together. That's why the Bible says, how can two or three people, how can two people walk together? That's a process that's going to a destination, except they agree. So in this process, there has to be agreement, but you can't have agreement when you're disconnected. You can't have agreement when you don't care. You cannot have agreement when you're not committed. You cannot have agreement when you don't communicate and you can't have an agreement when nobody's willing to change. You got, you got two votes. This man, did y'all get this man that just out revelation? Need an offer. You know him? Yes. He says, I got a great team. I love y'all. Y'all can have it. Y'all the best. He said, you got to connect. You got to you gotta connect with your head, with your heart. You got to care. Not monologues, but dialogues. You got to commit those some powerful three C's. Wait, did I miss any? Change. Somebody said change. Oh, it's five, Bishop. You you got to connect. You got to care. You got to communicate. You got to commit, and you got to change. Communicate and change, boy. That's a book right there. That's so good. Okay, I want y'all to start asking questions. What is fastest damn cash app? This <laughs> cash app is power gig. <laughs> power gig. Power gig. I'm just clowning. Okay, that was so good, Pastor Dan. I need y'all to ask questions. Dan, your wife says that's good. <laughs> All right, I need y'all to ask some questions. We 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 almost out of time. This is so good. Bishop, um, I have a question for the uh, for the executive team. So we live in a in a day and age where a lot of individuals, a lot of couples, are choosing not to get married, but they're choosing to live together. They're saying, you know, what's I mean. What's the big deal? It's just a piece of paper. We're already sharing our lives. We're sharing our children. We're sharing rent. We're sharing money. Why do we need the paper? Why do we need a license? If you guys can, can, can help the people out. Why the covenant of marriage is so important compared to just living together. And it is, of course, the norm 
not only in the world, but it has become the norm, even in the church. Jesus. One of the things, and, and I'll begin with that, I guess, one, one of the things I think we have to look at is that marriage involves commitment. You may be sharing all these things, but you can walk away from that whenever you get ready. And then if you already know within yourself that this is not the person that I want to make a lifetime commitment with, then you, you just don't do it. Uh, people get together for various reasons, there, and, 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 and it's not always the right reason. They don't want to make commitment. They don't understand that marriage is something that we haven't talked about that much, but marriage is about covenant. Marriage is about doing some things that's going to cost me something in the end. There, there is a, they, that's a principle in scripture. When Jesus talked about uh, uh, be not uh, unevenly yoked with unbelievers, with unbelievers. And what he was talking about that, those individuals that were not believers in Christ, that were not like the, 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 the uh, Hebrew people. But that's a principle there that we have to learn as well. And the principle is that you can be unevenly yoked and both be Christians. It's, it's you're, you're unevenly yoked with a person that that's, you don't share the same things. You don't have the same qualities. There's a, so much of a gap between you two in the first place that when you get married, um, it's never, ever going to work. And what happens is when people are living together, often they have realized that's this gulf between us. But there are other reasons. I can have a man, don't have to marry you. I can walk away from this whenever I get, get ready. You're a woman, you're helping me do my thing, but uh, I'm doing another thing and I feel uh, innocent for doing that because you're not my wife. Uh, we're just here together. God is being left out of that entire equation and we have to go there. God is being left out of everything. It does not matter what God wants. Only thing that matters is what I want and why I'm doing it. Um, I, ask, I ask single women in particular, uh, especially single women that have education. Uh, you've got your own house. You've got your own car. You've got your own money. Uh -oh. uh, you, you got all these things and you did that without a man. You got all these things and you did that without a man. Now, when you come to me talking about possible marriage, my question is, why do you want to marry him? What's going on? The other thing that, that's very, very difficult to give up is independence. When I've been independent uh, for my entire life, I'm not going to do submission. And submission is, 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 happens with both husband and wife. But I don't have to do that if I don't marry you. And in many cases, the man is living in her house. Yeah. Driving her car. Street. Eating her food. My Lord. Dropping her off at work. My Lord. With no job and picking her up late. It's, 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 <laughs> it's, it's, it's reasons that really don't make any sense whatsoever. And it's happening at a larger uh, rate than we think. She, the, the bishop is spitting some deep, powerful stuff. Can I share with y'all, if you have a husband, men need to be needed. We need to feel that you need us. We may not tell you that all the time. We like to be needed. We want to know that you depend on us. Don't worry about us telling myself, I can do this without you. I don't need you. That's the worst insult you can say to a man is, I don't need you. I had this before. It makes them feel like nothing. To encourage your husband is to let him know, I got this big house, I got this big job, but nothing can take your place. You are fulfilling a part of me. So, you know, the, the women need to be loved. Women need to know that we love them. Men, we need to know you depend on us. You believe in us. The Bible says husbands want to be respected, right? And wives just want to be loved. So come on. And, and I think sometimes we stop appreciating each other in these marriages. We start taking each other for granted. We lose appreciation. We feel they're not important. They're not valuable. Oh, that's my wife. She's going to be there. That's my husband. He's going to be there. We have to appreciate the gifts in each other, the love in each other. Appreciate and celebrate each other. Don't take each other for granted. Don't wait till your spouse gets sick before you start appreciating them or to devastation or tragedy happens. Think about your spouse and let them know you are 
appreciate that. I'm sorry, Pastor Paul. Come on, help. Oh, no, I was just going to say, you know, a lot of times people don't see the blessing in marriage. They don't. The, the, the Bible says that God blesses marriage. He doesn't bless jacking. He doesn't bless snacking. Um, he blesses marriage. Snacking and jacking. Snacking and jacking. And you can't tell me y'all both in the same house and ain't nothing going on. You know, we live together, but we ain't having sex. We not. Mm -mm. No, you may not be having it right now, but somebody's going to slip on into the, uh, or like the Bible said, dot down to the other room. So, you know, um, they don't see the blessing in marriage and then they don't see enough godly examples of marriage. So then they're fearful and there is a difference. You can live together for years and live in unity, but as soon as you say, I do, the enemy Come on. of marriage will come for your marriage. Jesus. And that's why you got to go back to what Pastor Dan say, the commitment, the connection, the care, all of that, because the enemy don't fight shacking, but he fights marriage. Come on, so you got to remember that when you get married, when you get, when you commit, the enemy's coming for you. But that's why you have to have a resolve that no matter what we go through, I'm committed to the commitment that I made to you. I'm committed to the I do. The It says for better or for worse for richer or for poor, in sickness and in health, till death do us part. Not that you kill each other, but, you know, to, to, to God's death, the kind of death that God gives. But mm -hmm. they're not committed to the commitment. So it's easy for people to walk away because they say, hey, um, this is optional. I, I'm not committed. I don't have any investment here. When you have investment in something, you're not just going to walk away from your investment. You're going to keep doing what you need to do to keep making that investment valuable. And that's what a lot of people don't do. They don't invest in their marriage. So their marriage is not, um, it's just like anything. If you have property, if you have property, you don't take care of your property, your value is going down. But when you take care of your property, you invest in your property, that value is going up and you get more money than what you pay for. That's what marriage is. You get more out of it than you put in it when you're committed to the investment. Jesus, you own it, you own it. Um, so I want y'all to start typing in, what are some problems in marriage? What are some problems in marriage? Okay, not showing appreciation. Selfishness, selfishness. Marriage will teach you it's not about you. It's all about your spouse. While y'all are typing in, I'm telling y'all are amazing. Pastor Paula, Pastor Dan, Bishop Triplett, Pastor Andrea, I think we got the best team in the world. We, we have the best. I love y'all so much. Let me bring this up. Let me bring this up. And y'all typing in these problems. Where y'all at? I want to see the problems. The audience y'all own it. Somebody said this is better than House and House of Atlanta. <laughs> okay. So let me ask you all, what about sexless marriages? What's up with that? I've been hearing that. And thank y'all who on YouTube, those who on YouTube, Archbishop William Hudson the third, those on the powerhouse page. Somebody says pride, pride. Somebody says prayerlessness. Prayerlessness. Um, what else we got? Money. Oh, we need to talk about money. Should you put your finances together? Should you do money together? Stubbornness. Okay, real, real quick. Somebody. Uh, so we talk about sex, right? Yeah, we talking about sex and money. Let's do sex. Okay, I want to. I want to jump in there first. <laughs> Wait a minute. Sexless so, marriages. Why? Listen, is that? listen. If a woman doesn't want to have sex with her husband. See, here's the thing I think men and women need to understand. Women are receivers. So, you know, they want it. We want it just like men want it. You know, we're not like sitting in um, uh, Mother Teresa. We want it too. Men want it, we want it. So, but if a woman doesn't want to have sex, it's something else going on and it's mental. It's something, uh, offense. And one of the biggest ways offenses comes in is through unmet expectations or unexpressed expectations. And when what those do is when offense comes in, offense starts to build walls. And, and, and anytime you have offense, you will start creating fences. And when you have property and you put a fence up, you're putting that fence up, number one, for privacy, to keep people out. 
you're putting that fence up um, to isolate yourself. And so when fences go up in marriage um, and you don't uh, deal with offenses, then what you're doing is you're boxing yourself in. And that's what a lot of people are there. They build fences up because a fence hasn't been dealt with. And, and now they box themselves in away from their spouses. So no, they don't want to have sex because now they got all these walls built up that say, you know, you hurt my feelings or you this and that, uh, uh, all of these things that separate so when women, we if it starts in the man first before it ever gets down to Shelby. Well, listen, what, but what? Before it gets down to Shelby, you know, whatever yeah, you call that's yours. Right. <laughs> I have to get in there. Shelby, you, Shelby. you keep your that's nickname. That's my friend, Shelby. Keep your nickname for your friend. Wait a minute. Y'all no, not just all messing with me. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Down up, down up, down up. Donna Bell says, sometimes women shut down because the husband is mean, abusive, verbal, and physical. So true. Okay. So now I'm going to play devil's advocate with you, Paula. Pastor Paula. Uh -huh. So uh, women are emotional, okay? We do understand that. Somebody said that earlier. Men are physical. Women are emotional. So while you're going through this emotional thing and you don't want to have sex, what you want me to do? I'm married to you. I'm committed to you. I made a vow to you. So you going, you got a fence up and I can't get through the fence. So I'm going to drive to another house. What you want me to do? Why no, you no, you can't be driving in no other houses. Well, this, this is vice versa. To do. This women is here, but men is something else. The men have to talk to that. I don't know nothing about that. What, why y'all don't want to do it. But, um, the here's in my in my marriage. Let me use me as an example. Um, when there's something going on, and and I have myself have to deal with me so that I can do what I'm supposed to do as a wife. Now we ain't gonna be withholding no sex. That we just not gonna be doing that because withholding uh, nothing. Exactly. Right. Oh, well, there's, there's 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 like that all willy nilly. There's a reason why. There's a reason. There's but a reason. even in that reason, you have to deal with yourself. You got to yes. get your mind right. Yep. Because at the end of the day, your body does not belong to you and his body don't belong to him. So and then when you don't come together sexually, there is there is healing in sex and yes. marriage. There is help in sex and marriage. There is nonverbal communication happening when you're in the trenches of lovemaking. Well, that's some verbal communication too now. No, no, no. Some well, well, yeah, it's some verbal too, but I'm saying it's much deeper than that. Because if you don't say a word, if you don't say a word, raise your hand. Raise your hand. Hallelujah. Well, Mr. Wells says some men are selfish, not interested in doing what pleases their wife. So maybe some women it's not just offense, but they're not satisfied. They're not being pleased. And you have to communicate and you have to talk about that. Because you don't tell your husband or wife that you don't like what they're doing, they're gonna keep doing it. You gotta stop and, and maybe not in that, let them go in and get through and then later have an honest conversation. And say, you know, I know you felt good, but you hurt me. I was hurting. I didn't like that. I don't like that position. Maybe we can do it like this. Or slow down. You was too bad. Or it was too quick. Something. You got to have honest communication about sex. Everybody thinks that sex is good, but it ain't. Okay? <laughs> and, and you comparing the other people you had before you had them. You got to find out what they like. It was satisfying. Somebody said, don't park that Mack truck in another garage. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what, Bishop? I think the missing piece sometimes is before you get married, you got to talk about sex. That's you right. Gotta talk about you got to talk about it. That's you right. You got to talk about you because some people have experience and some people don't. What are your expectations as it pertains to sex? What are your expectations as it pertains to oral sex? And, he, and here's the thing. Gee, you gotta have, show number two, oral sex. Let me, let me, let me, <laughs> let me 
I gotta jump in. She gave it, she gave it from a woman's perspective. There's some other things that we gotta deal with because one of the things we gotta deal with is the big C word that we talked about, which is communication. We gotta deal with that communication because disconnect first starts with the disconnection of communication. So now there's fences that's been built, and I didn't even know the fence was built because you haven't said nothing to me. You just start acting funny. And yep. then you know what's yep, wrong? Yep, yep. You say, You're right there. Nothing. What do you mean? <laughs> You're right there. Wrong? Take me out the show. You're Take right me there. out. Come on, nothing, nothing wrong. You start, no, something wrong. You didn't get in my breakfast. Me. You're acting funny. Something wrong. The other piece to that to that is we gotta understand that the love making experience is an experience and it starts before you hit the bedroom. Yes, it does. So there's a lot of there's a level of flirting, there's a level of intimacy that's being communicated verbally before you even get to the bedroom. And then the other piece is you have to abandon all previous experiences. Because if you're looking to replicate or duplicate that which you had before you consummated this marriage, then literally what's going to happen is you're going to wind up entering, bringing your soul tie into your God tie, and it ain't going to work. So you got to abandon all of that stuff. And like my mama told me, can I tell them what my mama told me? She yeah, said, what your mama, said. mama said, she, I'm going to tell you what my mama said. You said I could say it, so I'm going to say it, Bishop. Oh, Lord. I'm about Sharon <laughs> Mel now. My mama said, I ain't going to raise no sisters. And I ain't going to raise no boy that don't know how to satisfy no girl. And so what my mama told me was this. She said, every woman, every real woman, knows what it takes to please them. So you don't go in acting like you uh, you know everything. You go in like a student and you be taught how to please them because what pleases one woman is not going to please another. So just because you was King Kong Bundy over there, <laughs> well, I'm just saying. So you got to be able to have, as women, you got to be able to effectively communicate Please, how, how to your husband, how you want to be pleased. Now, here's the other piece we are visual, and you didn't never, you never put the bonnet on your head until after we got married. You, you don't come, you can't come to bed looking like anything. You got the t shirt you've been wearing for 20 years, it's not attractive, and you know, nobody won't be bothered with that. I just got to tell y'all the truth. See, there's this thing, and I'm gonna be done. I'm gonna say this piece. You gotta learn how to be the wife, the mistress, and the whore. Teach it. You gotta be the Trinity woman. The Trinity <laughs> woman. We don't yeah, believe in the Trinity. But we want y'all to put on costumes too, like y'all want us to put on costumes. So where y'all costumes at? Who you want us to be? Superman? Woo! Superman, no, policeman, <laughs> Batman. Well, that's <laughs> where that's where the communication needs to come in. <laughs> <laughs> that's where it comes in, but that's another piece of this. And I think Cowboy, <laughs> what? <laughs> Somebody said foreplay. Gilda Ray said foreplay is not only with the hands. Oh my God. No, no, it's with the communication. It's at the it's on the phone, baby. How your day going? It's all of that. It's the roses that you send to the job and make all of her girlfriends jealous. It's 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 all of that. Um, my wife said to me um about a month and a half ago, my Jesus chick, she said, We gotta start dating more because as the kids grow up, we we ain't gonna have nothing to do with each other if we don't invest that time. And so some we make time for everything else, we gotta make time for each other. Because it, here's the truth. If we can't communicate outside the bed, we're going to have problems communicating inside the bed. We're not going to even make it to the bedroom with that level of intimacy. If I can't be intimate with you, we're just talking about your day. You, you understand what I'm saying? If I don't care about what you're dealing with and the issues that you're having, then it's going to be kind of hard to find that place of intimacy. I think Bishop Triplett said it earlier. It's about sacrifice. God so loved the world that he gave. What validates our love to one another is that we're willing to give our only for the only one that we believe God has called us to and yeah. better his house. Shelly said, that was good, Pastor. Shelly said, I wear my bonnet proudly. Still cute. 
<laughs> right. Bling that, bling that bonnet out. Somebody said intimacy and absolutely it's all about communication. Foreplay can be all day. Oh, Lord, who is that? Joyce, <laughs> kid, I'm going to get you. Anybody got time for that all day? What? But I know what you're saying. Calls and texts and all of that. Y'all making us work. You're making us work. Can I say something real quick? And then I want to turn it over to Bishop Triplett. Um, Paula talked about earlier about tearing those walls of offense down that would that would prohibit or prevent someone from, from being intimate and from someone being sexual. And sometimes, and I just want to you know help help the, the the men that are on tonight. Sometimes what your wife needs that can, can make all the difference in the world is just two little words. I'm sorry. And sometimes, and it, and it can be the same vice versa. We're, sometimes as spouses, we're so full of pride and we know what it, will, what it will take to bring our spouse back in when that disconnect starts to happen. And we won't do it because we feel like I didn't do nothing wrong. This is what happened. This is who I am. She got the problem. He got the problem. Two little words sometimes can tear that thing down immediately, immediately, and cause the healing to come, to cause the intimacy to be restored. And you got to put away your pride, whether that's you as a woman, as a wife, you as a man. And you know the disconnect is there. You know that your spouse is now becoming more isolated. They're, you can tell, you can feel it. Listen, thank God, when you're married, you know the heartbeat of your spouse. You know your spouse's heartbeat, and you know when something is not right. And sometimes it's just putting away your pride and saying, I'm sorry, I, I can do better. I'm going to do better. And that would immediately begin to tear down some of those walls of offense and isolation and cause healing and restoration to not only come to the bedroom, but to come to your marriage in its entirety. Lady, you are talking up in here. I got some phrases that you just said, and I want y'all to type it in for me and let's add on to them. Let's get some small phrases that brings healing and strength to a marriage. I'm sorry. That's one. Somebody type it in. I'm sorry. I appreciate you. That's another. I need you. That's another. I celebrate you. That's another. I believe in you. Give me some small statements because when you're married to a person, they want you to celebrate them. If they accomplish something, you, you got to celebrate them. You got to encourage them. You got to build them. You got to let them know I need you. Somebody said, I see you. That's good. I love you. Baby, you are my world. That's your nail skin. I'll do better. I need you. Come on, give me some powerful phrases. I want you. I like that. Who said that? I trust you. Leslie Howell. Y'all are doing this. You're right, babe. Leon Scoggins. Come on, Pastor. Tell her you're right, babe. She better be right, you know. I'm proud of you. That's good, Angelina Hill. I'm proud of you. You're beautiful. Don't stop complimenting your spouse. I support you. As yes. You know, a lot of problems in these marriages are problems that we had personally before we got married. Me ministering to a lot of these couples, Lady and I, over the years, most of the issues are previous history. Yeah. That needs to be unpacked, that needs to be dealt with. Sometimes it's stuff you dealt with as a child, it's stuff you dealt with as a teenager that's still in your life that is manifesting that you got to be healed from abuse, hurt, pain, molestation, verbal abuse, physical abuse, sexual abuse. You bring all of that baggage into the relationship and you got to unpack that, destroy the baggage and get healed so you can come in as a clean slate. You're treating your husband like the last two men that you had. You're treating your wife like the last five women that you were in a relationship with. That's not going to work. You got to let that go. It's not the to come in clean. Tina Owsley, that's my sister. She said, I'm here for you. Somebody said, that dress looks good on you. Don't worry. I got you. Katrina Smith, ain't no me without you. 
Chanel Cooster. I respect you, Karen Mouse. You and my heart, Joyce Bridges. Y'all are blessing me. I need you, honey. That's what Emma said. How can I make it better, Crystal? So we got to close up, lady. We on for time. This is so good. So Do good. We, should we continue this next week or are we moving on? The people want it. They want, they want part two. They, the people want part two with our executive team on next week. They want a part two. We got to give it to them. You're my Superman. Sheen Sheen said, you're my Superman. Go buy me Superman suit, Sheen Sheen. <laughs> I support you, honey. Okay. Can't nobody fly like you. <laughs> <laughs> so let me let uh, Pastor Dan and Pastor Hudson, they want to know how to get y'all books. Yes, yeah, so you can go on my website at Andrea, A-N-D-R-I-A, S, Hudson.com. Click on shop. And all of my books are listed, but my recent book, the ebook for the 150 questions, that is listed on my website. So you can go and, and purchase it and get the download tonight. Thank you, lady. Angela Yancey, thank you for coming in all the way from Texas. We've got Angela Yancey from Texas. We appreciate you. If you're from another state, let us know. Fort Worth, Texas. Wow. Well, Zena said you got to say you're sexy. I can't do this without you. It's me and you against the world. Well, I gotta be against the world, I'ma do. But I understand what you're saying. We want <laughs> I got you back, Tara Bell. Uh, you're the love of my life. This is really good. This is needed. I hate separation and divorce. Um, um Pastor Dan, how do we get your book? It's um on Amazon. You just go to Amazon and you should be able to download it. Um, I don't know if the paperback is still in circulation, but the ebook is still. Baby, you make my liver quiver. <laughs> That's your base Phillips. She just got married. Baby, you make my liver quiver. All right, your base. <laughs> oh I love the power house. So don't y'all forget, we'll be back Thursday for prayer. I want you to sow a seed before we close up. Go to Cash App Power Give. Go to text to give. Go to our website, powerhousechicago.org. This is Tuesday night Bible class. Bring your tithe. Bring your offering. Thank you for tithing. Thank you for giving. We got a lot of stuff to buy, y'all. We got to get the LED screen. We got to get chairs. We got a lot of things to get ready for 2021. Um, we need your financial support. Make sure you're tithing. Make sure you're giving. Powerhousechicago.org. Text 74483. You can download our app for Secure Give. Cash at Power Give. You can sell at Power Give at powerhousechicago.org. I hope you all were blessed. Let us know if you were blessed by the teaching on tonight. Um, okay, we're going to let everybody give us a closing statement, and then Pastor's going to pray us out. Okay, so we're going to go around the table. Um, I love our executive team. Can y'all encourage them and fill them up? Okay, encourage the executive team. Let them know. We trust in them and we believe in them and we love them. God has given Pastor Hudson and myself a capable, anointed team. We've been praying for this for 30 years and I am so happy that we can do what God has called us to do because we have an awesome support system. I want to thank your wives and your husband. I want to actually personally say thank you to Sister Helen Triplett. She's on. We love you, Sister Helen. Thank you for allowing Bishop to be here for us. Thank you, Pastor Marcus Dickens, for allowing Pastor Paula to be here with us and, and spending all this time in ministry. Sister Aisha Johnson, we love you. Thank you for allowing your husband to be here with you all. We really, really appreciate you. So y'all going to close us out. We're going to go first. Give us like a one-minute closing statement. Um, uh, I'll jump in first. <laughs> I, I got before you, Bishop. <laughs> I just right wanted here. to leave that um, in marriage, you're going to have your challenges, but it's it's owning your part in whatever's going on and making sure that pride is not um, in the equation. When you own your part of it and you, you handle your part of it, it softens your spouse to then reciprocate that. So for instance, if, if something is going on 
and I look at myself and I say, what part did I play in this? And then I handle the part that I play. Forgive me, like Pastor Andrea said, I'm sorry. You know, I'm gonna do better I'll, and, and, and own it, own what you did and what part you played. And that will cause healing, that will cause wholeness, and that will cause um, those walls that I talked about earlier to be torn down. So that's what I want to leave with you. Come on, y'all, Pastor Dan. All right, I was going to yield to Bishop Triplett, but this is fine. Um, the root word in relationship is relate. And in order to authentically relate, I believe there's four things, four principles in building a healthy relationship. Number one is trust. Number two is communication. Number three is fellowship. And number four is sacrifice. So there must be trust. There must be communication. There must be fellowship. And there must be sacrifice. I learned a long time ago that if my spouse says to me, if my Jesus chick says, that this is what you did and this is how it made me feel. Even if I don't believe her feelings are valid, even if I don't agree with her, I, if I care for her, I have to respond in kind because I don't want her to feel that way, which means there's an adjustment that I'm going to have to make because if something I'm doing is making her feel a certain way, whether I agree with it or not. If I truly care and truly love her, then and I don't want her to feel that, then I'm going to have to make the adjustment. So those two things, those four pieces that I said, and be willing to make the adjustment. Mr. Triplett. Yes, but what I'd like to say that there are two words that 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 we have to put place in here, and I think they're very, very important. And everything that's been said is very, very true. But there are two words that you don't want to have to experience, and those two words are too late. That in a relationship and in a marriage, you can wait too long to have communication, you can wait too long to do all the things that we talked about, and it can get to the point that it's simply too late. One of the worst things that can happen is for you to realize what you had too late. Realize what you've missed, realize what you have uh, helped to tear up, and you realize that too late. Hopefully from this, you'll start having that communication now. You will do that. Then you have to make sure, this is very, very important, that you don't open the door for the devil to come in. We have to remember that we cover each other. We cover each other. I was asked a question, and, and I'll just finish with this. I was asked a question one time from a group of women. Was that any any really uh, justification for infidelity? And I said, no. And the women started clapping. Everybody was happy. Then I said, I'm not done with my answer. I said, why, there is no, no uh, ever uh, reason or rhyme that that should happen. There are contributions to it. We have to understand we cover one another. How many headaches have you had? How many times have you said no? Of uh, what happened to the things that make each other happy? And if that continues to go on, if a person has a need, that need does not go away because you don't fulfill it. Often in marriages, there's this sense of entitlement and when you start believing in this sense of entitlement, I'm entitled to this because you're my husband or because of my wife, but never think about what your contribution should be. And you let that go on for sometimes years. You reach that place of too late. And hopefully you understand that. And hopefully if you need help in your marriage, you will begin to have the things that's been talked about now. Jesus. Bishop Triplett, Pastor Dan, Pastor Paula, we love you all. Can y'all say some powerful things in these comments? I'm telling you, what God is doing to you in the powerhouse is absolutely amazing. Can you imagine the Lord has added a whole nother level to our church? You have Archbishop and Pastor. Then after us, we got these three powerful executive pastors. Then we have 
vision that we're going to bring to you as well and introduce them. But our executive pastors are absolutely filled with wisdom, filled with power, and they are amazing. I love each of you. I'm proud of you. I honor you, and I celebrate you. We got to go. We went over time. Pastor Andrea, I love you, babe. I oh, love I love you, too. You. I just thank God for you being an awesome wife and an awesome leader. We love you so much. Pray for us. We need prayer. We need prayer. Absolutely. 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 Father, in the name of Jesus, for everyone that is on tonight, I pray right now for inner healing. I pray right now for emotional healing. I pray right now for healing God of the heart. I pray right now for healing of the past. In the name of Jesus, healing God from hurt and rejection and betrayal, God, and anger, God, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every marriage. God, I pray, God, that you would heal from the inside out, God. God, that you would deal with both the wife and the husband, God. In the name of Jesus, your word says what you have joined together, let no man put us under. So we come against every enemy of marriage. We come against enemies, God, of misunderstanding, enemies, God, of lack of communication, enemies of pride and deceit, enemies of selfishness and control. And God, we speak peace right now to every home peace right now to every marriage. In the name of Jesus, we speak restored love, restored unity, restored oneness. In the name of Jesus, we curse the spirits of divorce. We curse the spirits of separation. We curse every divisive attack of the enemy that will try to divide our homes and divide our families, even during this pandemic. In the name of Jesus, we come against, oh God, every attack and plot of, and scheme of the enemy that will try to divide our families during this quarantine. And Father, I speak right now that even from tonight to the end of the year, that there will be change, God, in our homes, change in our marriages, change in our families, change in our spouses, change in our children, God, change in our mindsets, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the sanctity of marriage. We thank you that you ordained it from the very foundations of the world. And God, we recommit ourselves to one another. We pray right now for every single woman, we pray for every single man, God, that you would protect them, that you would keep them, God, that you would encourage them, Lord, that they will know that they are not forgotten, but they are on your agenda and they are a part of your plan. In all of these things, God, we give you thanks and we give you glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I love you, Powerhouse, and all of our guests. Thank you for joining us. We'll see y'all Thursday at 7 p.m. Put PM, put your PM, put your questions, put your questions. We'll talk about them next week. Have a great week. And if you're married, have some good sex tonight. Love y'all. <laughs>